Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here, and today I want to talk to you about opening files. Specifically, I want to talk to you about how we can describe and specify the files that we want to open. So let's start off with something really easy. In the current directory, that is to say, in the same directory as I'm running my Python program, or in this particular case, as I have Jupyter, I have a file called myfile.txt. I can check this with uh, exclamation point ls, myfile.txt. Sure enough, it's there. So let's say I want to open it. How do I open it? Well, I say f equals open of myfile.txt. That was pretty simple, right? And it worked. I now say f, it shows me the printed representation of the object. I can then, if I want to, read the contents of the file and says, this is my file.txt with a new line, all is good. What did I tell Python here though? I said, in the current directory, in the same place where I'm located, there is a file called my file.txt. This is the simplest case. This is, I don't know if it's the most common case, but it's certainly something that we try to do just because it makes things nice and simple. But, well, life is not always that simple. Let's say I want to open a different file. I want to open the file Etsy password. Notice the difference between these file names. And here I'm being very, very Unix specific, okay? If you're on Windows, it works a little differently, not just backslash instead of slashes, but also the root of your file system is specified differently. When I just say myfile.txt, notice there are no slashes in there. That means it's a file in the current directory, end of story. When I give it a path that starts with a slash, right? The initial slash means I'm describing the file's absolute location starting at the root of the file system. So this means go to the root of the file system slash, go into the etc subdirectory, then another slash. Inside of that subdirectory, you will find a file called password. And indeed, if I say f equals open of etsy password, right, f.read, and it gives me the contents of the file. Okay, that's way too long to actually display, but fine if I do an f.read of, let's say, until 200. Okay, so we get that. So what's the difference between the two? The difference is that this specification, an absolute path will work regardless of where I am on my computer. If I run this program inside of temp, if I run this program inside of my home directory, if I run this program inside of somewhere else, it will always work because this gives a fully uh, uh, like, uh, um, you know, the absolute location, which means that I don't need to worry about where I'm relative to things. By contrast, if I say here just my file.txt, I better be in the same directory. I have to run my program in the same directory. Otherwise, bad news, Python, the operating system, will not find the file. Couldn't I specify my file.txt as an absolute path? Absolutely. Haha, <laughs> little joke there. I can say filing equals users, Ruven, uh, courses, YouTube, notebooks, myfile.txt. The, this is the absolute path for myfile.txt in the current directory. If I want to, I can specify this way. The good news is that this gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of running my program. The bad news is that if I ever move this file, right, if I keep it alongside my program, well, I have to then change the absolute directory. Right, so now I can say open a file name dot read and we get all that text and that's fine. So you might think that there are either these like simple plain file names or that we can use an absolute path, but there's actually a mix of the two that we can use too. We can use a relative path in which, you know, which doesn't start with slash, but does contain a slash. What does that mean? It means that we are gonna start from the current directory and then we're gonna move down or up in various subdirectories. So for example, I have in the current directory here, my subdir, oh, it's my sub. Uh, what did I call this thing? Subdir, oh, it's not my subdir, it's just subdir. There we go. I have a subdirectory, a folder, underneath the current YouTube notebooks folder. And inside of that, I have a file called subfile.txt. So if I want to open that file from the current directory, I can use a relative path. I can say file name equals subdir slash subfile.txt. Notice again, it does not start with a slash because we want to start in the current directory. 
But then underneath that, well, it is inside of a folder. So now I can say f equals open a file name, and I can say there, well, I can just say f.read, and I get back, this is a subfile. Could I also express this as an absolute path? Again, absolutely. I can say file name equals users, Reuven, courses, YouTube, notebooks, and I can say subder, subfile.txt. And now if I say open a file name dot read, it works just great. Now I can also use, um, uh, Unix has special names for directories, including dot dot. Dot dot means go up one level. So if I say, um, a file name equals dot dot. So I'm now in users, Reuven, courses, YouTube, notebooks. Dot dot means I'm in courses. Slash dot dot means I'm in Reuven. All right, so now I can say dot zshrc. I'm going to get my zsh configuration file. And now I should be able to say open a file name dot read, and we'll just get the first 200 there. And sure enough, I get it. So you can play all sorts of games with these relative paths. And it's not unusual. You could say it's relatively common, haha, for you to use that. Again, you just need to make sure that you know where you are in the file system and whether you're going down with subdirectories or whether you're going up with dot dot. I would say if you can use absolute paths, that's a better way to go, especially with something like Etsy password where it's unlikely to change. And then you don't have to worry about where your program is. But again, if you have a file that's connected to your program, like a configuration file, then it might make sense to use a relative path there. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful in explaining why we use slashes, when they're at the beginning, when they're in the middle, what the dot dot means and all that. If you have questions or comments, leave them here below, subscribe, like, and I will be back soon with lots more about Python, pandas, and everything in between.